Dutch angle because I'm feeling fancy. Welcome to my week. This week I'm illuminated from below like a creepy man because basically it's Friday night, which is the latest I've left it to record my week actually. And uh, there's no natural lighting and I'm off to the gym soon so I can't be bothered to set up lights. So you've got this weird blue faced me. Hi. Uh, what's new with me this week? Well, we announced the lineup for Out of the Broom Cupboard at the Manchester Comedy Store. Uh, and we also reduced the entrance age. So, if you are 12 to 16, you can now get your tickets if you phone up the Manchester Comedy Store. You can get your tickets for five pounds, but you have to come with at least one adult. So, student or adult, like who is older than you and of legal age to you know look after you and everything. Uh, so, yes, it means the event will have slightly less swear words than it was planning on having, but it will still be an educational event. So it's not just going to be wacky nonsense. It'll be wacky nonsense that will also teach you something. So you know, my reward's still coming along. I just realised there was demand for it, and also like 15 year old me would have loved to have come to something like this. So why not? I had a word with the comedy store and we're doing it, so there we are. The guests have been announced. April 11th, London News. April 18th, Ed Petrie. April 25th, hang on, don't want to get mixed up, Alex Winters. Uh, May the 2nd, Ben Shires. And May the 9th, Ian Sterling. Details are in the link below. Come along, please do. A lot of people have been saying to me, Chris, 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 I can't make it to these shows, it's just a bit out of my way, when are you going to take it on the road? I honestly can't take it on the road unless it does well in this first run because that's what's going to convince other venues to, to put the show on. Um, it's all me. Like I, I'm, I'm the person organising it. Like I, I'm basically producing this event. I'm only hosting it because it's the easiest thing to do. I don't have to pay for a host. So there we are. Uh, are you hosting it for free? I am. I'm hosting my own event for free, but I am producing it. So there we go. Um, so if you want the show to come to a town near you, I need you to do two things. I need you to let me know theatres that you think would be worth getting in touch with. And also, I need you, if you can't make it yourself, to spread the word and let the people know in the Greater Manchester Northwest area that it's happening. Because the more tickets we sell, the more proof we have that the show works and there is a demand for it, and the easier we can sell it to other theatres. So, if you want to come and see London and Ed and Alex and Ben, and Ian talking about working on kids' television, get up to bits of nonsense, Q and A. You have a chance to ask some questions yourself. Then come on down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, what did I do this week? Well, this week I did a lot of prep for the show. I've been trying to get the word out, spread advertising, get leaflets sorted out, do some talks and everything in places to advertise the show. But I also went for my first job interview in a million years to get a part-time shift um, because I get bored really easily and. Last year I had like enough TV jobs scattered over a period of time that it freed me up. I just realised how eerie I look. I keep looking at myself and like, oh, hang on, I do this. And close my mouth. I'm just kind of crackpot theorist. Lizard. Took my baby. Anyway, um, do you have it? Uh, don't you have it? Don't do it. Um, I was lucky enough last year to have gigs spread out in a way where I, I was sort of comfortable, if that makes any sense. Like financially I was comfortable in that and I didn't have have a need to sort of seek out another job if I, if I, if I, if, unless I wanted to. And I did kind of want to, but that was the other, that was the other problem with the, that having that regular-ish work was I didn't have time enough to commit to a part-time job. Which I'd like to do. I, I don't like sitting on my laurels. I do make stuff, but ultimately I still want to earn money. Like, I've got a roof on me. I want to pay for it. Uh, I want to earn money. I want to make myself useful. But I also don't want to, you know, um, do a disservice to the place that would be kind enough to give me a chance at employment. Because if I'm like, oh, I've got to go because I'm shooting a TV show for two weeks, that's not on, is it? It's not right. So part time uh, and cover shifts is something I've been looking for doing for forever for various places just to, you know, like fit them in. This year I'm a little freer, but at the same time, now that I'm doing an event production, I might be doing more of it if it goes well, so I want to make sure that I'm free enough at the moment. So I inquired at somewhere that I've, I've wanted to sort of give a nudge up for a while, and I got my job interview the other day, and I did really well, and I aced it, uh, which I'm really happy with, um, considering it's the first one I've had since pre-TV, really. I've had a couple like little ones since, but not like, a, you know, a, a, oh, this is leading to a job more, oh, let's see if you'd be up for it. Um, so yeah, I've got my trial run next week, and then I might have one more before I go away 
to Lincoln, and then I start my sort of shifts between the comedy store shows. That's kind of interesting. Um, I'm actually really excited. It's not even like the most exciting job in the world, but I'm, you know, I'm excited to do doing something, you know? What else? Uh, yeah, Lincoln. Uh, I'm doing the Easter pantomime. Uh, it's not like all sorted sorted yet, but like it's I'm there. So Alice in Wonderland, the new Theatre Royal. Tickets will also be below if you want to come and see me play the White Rabbit. Um, it's going to be a laugh. If you came to the uh, Aladdin pantomime at Christmas, a couple of the cast members from that other side from myself are also in this one. So you'll be getting a cheeky little bit more of uh, people who had a laugh last time. So I do hope to see you there. Let me know in the comments if you're coming. I tell you, me and my brother went out. Uh, and he had a rare day off from work and we went and saw Black Panther, which he hadn't seen yet. And my god, it's good, isn't it? It's good, isn't it, with my ghoulish face? Uh, also, what else? Yes! Um, new Five Foo Fans video. I'll link that at the end. It's terrible. I I just basically made a stupid little thing that I knew would annoy people. So <laughs> Also make people smile, hopefully. There's a, there's a nice joke in there. A very solid, throws you off course joke. Balls. And uh, what else? Big Damn Cast this week, we talked about franchises that came back from the dead that should have stayed dead. So I'll link that as well. Do you know what? They're both here. They're both here. Uh, shoot me some questions down in the comments. I'll answer as many as I can. This has been my week this week. Ooh, mince. That's a terrible catchphrase to end on. Now the police are here. <laughs>